There is a lot of information from Glenlee which is highly relevant to farmers and an example would be designing a good crop rotation, designing a rotation that supplies enough nutrients to the crops. This is really important to farmers. When I think about the Glenlee rotation, there's really, uh, there's really two, comp two dimensions to the study. One is uh, very practical and agronomic, where information is produced that farmers can use today or in their, or in their planning for tomorrow. And then there's the other bubble, which is really um, monitoring the ecology of the system. And we're starting to use some of those things that we learned in the organic system for conventional production because some of our weed killers don't work anymore. I'm with uh, Poplar Grove Farm and we're an organic farm. One of the things that Martin Enns and his team does here is uh, they provide a voice. Until his group uh, came onto the scene, there was very little to grab onto as far as local knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the lower your risk is. With the greater and greater supports that are out there now, the risk to going into organic farming is less. It's encouraging for an organic farmer to realize that there's someone in the research community that takes organic farming seriously. When I look at the rotations we're doing, it's really important to have a really good green manure crop in that rotation. And I think that's, that always comes back to, to sort of how we grow high yielding crops is we need to start with sort of a fertility regime and that starts with growing a good green manure crop. One of our big focuses in the laboratory is grappling with the great challenge of climate change and the production of greenhouse gases from crop production. Well, nitrous oxide is produced from the cycling of nitrogen in soils. In organic systems, such as here at Glen Lee, we're fixing nitrogen via legumes such as alfalfa, allowing that legume to grow, and then we plow it in in the late summer, early fall. And then that provides the nitrogen for the following year. When we plant wheat following the alfalfa, we're not seeing emissions of nitrous oxide during the growing season. I am the coordinator for the participatory plant breeding program here at the University of Manitoba. And the goal of the program is to empower farmers to breed their own varieties of wheat, oat, or potato on their own organic farm so that they end up with a variety that works specifically for their system. I believe a farmer, an organic farmer specifically, will find more profitability in a line that's been developed under organically managed systems and has especially disease resistance and maybe some competitiveness with the weeds so they don't have to worry about how to manage that cultivar. They can grow it on their land and if a disease is present, they'll have genetic resistance, which is really optimal. I always like to tell people that, that organic systems can produce high quality food and, and lots of it. They can produce that food with fewer greenhouse gas emissions, but that's only if attention is paid to the whole system. 